Live from Case at 12. Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. Making headlines this morning, a San Antonio police officer is under arrest, accused of theft and tampering with evidence. We have details on the case. Plus, gas prices are pushing even farther above $4 a gallon, the highest price that some American motors have faced since July of 2008. And outside with live cam, it is chilly out there and you might run into a shower or two this morning. I saw a few sprinkles on the windshield on the way downtown. Good morning, everybody. It is Tuesday, March 8th. Thanks for joining us this morning. I didn't see sprinkles, but I definitely felt the cold this morning. And if you look at radar this morning, it's weird because we've got showers kind of doing this, <laughs> depending on where you look. Here's Mike with more. Welcome back, Mike. Thank you very much. I think a lot of the rain also is evaporating. There's not a lot of places reporting it right now uh -huh. uh, because we've got some really dry air in place. But yeah, there are a couple of, I saw a couple of damp spots on the road, but it, it's not as much down here as it looks like on radar. So radar is a little more uh, ominous. And yes, it is chilly out there. So, I mean, you know, I, I still never never ceases to amaze me. Sunday was shorts and yesterday was a coat. And we're going to be doing the same thing throughout the rest of the week and going to be up and down and all over the place. All right, it does look like there may be a bit of a sheen on the road over there by 410 over around the uh, airport. Here's what radar looks like, and there's a lot showing up. And we do have, again, some of these uh, light showers here. Some may be reaching the ground, but again, we've got some fairly dry air. Uh, temperatures are close to normal readings. We're at 47 right now, low 40s in the hill country. Yeah, it is uh, definitely chilly out there and with kind of a, a damp cool if you will with some of those uh, sprinkles and we do have a good wind out of the north at about 10 15 20 miles per hour some wind gusts out there so yep there is a wind chill to deal with 35 Bernie stage 42 here in town and the allergens boy we have got just a whole laundry list of everything out there yeah just looking at this you'd think okay spring is in the air but Get ready because we do have some more winter coming in here, at least winter temperatures later on in the week. 44 this morning will drop down a couple of more notches here. A couple of showers and breezy wind out of the northeast, 10 to 20 miles per hour. A lot of clouds hanging around here. It is going to stay on the cool side today. 52 for high temperature. We have a big warm up, then a big cool down, then a big warm up. Any more rain in there? We'll get it all sorted out and maybe a couple of freezes too. Details in just a couple of minutes. Steph, Mark. Thank you, Mike. San Antonio police say what started as a minor accident turned into something much bigger. Officer Nesta Reed is now under arrest accused of theft, tampering with evidence and obstruction of a roadway. Investigators say Reed hit a barrier earlier Saturday morning and caused minimal damage to his patrol unit. However, instead of telling his supervisor, police say he tried to hide the evidence near some railroad tracks on Indiana Street just east of downtown. Officers say that he took the license plates off the police unit and removed the city issued laptop from the vehicle before leaving it on the tracks. Reed is a five year veteran with the police force. He is being suspended without pay as this investigation continues. This morning, gas prices are climbing faster than ever before. And now experts are warning drivers to prepare for an even bigger price increase in the coming weeks. ABC's M. Wynn has the latest. This morning, the average price for gas in America quickly surging past $4 a gallon. Prices rising 49 cents in the last week as the war in Ukraine escalates. The states with largest increases include Rhode Island, Nevada, Connecticut, Kentucky, and Alabama. And experts say the national average could jump by another 50 cents in the coming weeks. Gas prices in the very short term probably will continue inching up slowly. Uh, but much of what we saw over the weekend were some very large increases. That is likely to be toned down this week. The price of oil hit $130 a barrel Monday. A senior U.S. official tells ABC News that price could reach $170 by the end of the week. As the U.S. and other countries discuss possibly restricting Russian oil imports, something President Biden has been reluctant to do so far. We are continuing to take steps uh, to deliver punishing economic consequences on Putin while taking all action necessary to limit the impact to prices at the gas pump. But now there's growing bipartisan support in Congress for a bill banning Russian energy products. The House could vote as soon as today. I think this would be a veto-proof majority in the House. I'm hopeful the same in the Senate, mainly because uh, Republicans and Democrats in both the House and Senate worked through the weekend really constructively on this bill. M. Wynn, ABC News, Washington.
President Joe Biden expected to sign an executive order on cryptocurrency this week that will mark the first step toward regulating how digital currency is traded. The move comes as administration officials have raised concern in recent weeks about Russia's use of crypto to evade the impact of crushing sanctions in response to its invasion of Ukraine. The order will describe what government agencies need to do in order to develop policies and regulations on digital currencies. In a victory for Democrats, the Supreme Court has turned away efforts from Republicans in North Carolina and Pennsylvania to block state court-ordered congressional districting plans. In separate orders, the justices are allowing maps selected by each state's Supreme Court to be in effect for the 2022 elections in North Carolina. The map most likely will give Democrats an additional House seat in 2023. Republicans say the same is true for the Pennsylvania map. The two parties are continuing to battle for control of the U.S. House of Representatives in the midterm elections. A Texas oil pipeline billionaire is suing Beto O'Rourke for defamation after the Democrat criticized his $1 million donation to Republican Governor Greg Abbott's campaign following last year's deadly winter blackouts. O'Rourke is calling the lawsuit frivolous. The former presidential candidate has criticized Abbott for accepting a $1 million donation from Kelsey Warren, chairman of Energy Transfer. O'Rourke says the two-term governor let energy companies off the hook by not mandating more significant industry oversight or weatherization. A spokeswoman for Abbott says their campaign has nothing to do with the lawsuit. 436, about 46 degrees. And still ahead, it was a big night for the San Antonio Spurs and Coach Greg Popovich taking on the LA Lakers last night. We're going to have the highlights of the much needed win. Checking traffic right now. Don't be surprised if there's a little bit of moisture on the roads here or there this morning. But Mike says the showers are not all that significant. Looking live at 35 and New Braunfels and I-35 upper and lower near Main Street. Yeah, not too bad out there, but definitely cold, uh, 46 degrees. Yeah, you're going to want to grab that jacket today, and you're probably going to keep it all day long. We'll be right back. Keldon Johnson and the Spurs hosting the Lakers without LeBron, who was out due to a sore left knee. Spurs trying to help Coach Pop finally tie Don Nelson on the all-time wins list. The Spurs get off to a great start. Doug McDermott gets a wide open look in the corner for the three, and he gets a friendly bounce to put San Antonio up 16-11. That would set the pace for the night and led to a big 117-110 win over the Lakers. Also finally let Coach Pop tie Nelson's NBA record with his 1,335th career victory. Pop humbly chose mostly to ignore the achievement. He didn't mention it to players after the victory, and he didn't take any questions about the record during a brief three-question session with the reporters. Meanwhile, DeJounte Murray had 26 points and 10 rebounds. Jakob Pertl and Josh Richardson each had 18 points. This was Richardson's first start with San Antonio. It's great to be, you know, this is a tiny part of Coach Pop's uh, record, record set and win. And uh, hopefully, you know, he can go get the record the next in the next game and, uh, you know, keep it going, keep pushing it. Coach Pop has five NBA titles and is a lock for enshrinement in the NBA Hall of Fame after a career in which he's coached Spurs grace David Robinson, Tim Duncan, Tony Parker, and Manu Ginobili. Coach Pop will try to pass Nelson's record when San Antonio hosts the Raptors tomorrow night. Tip-off set for 7.30 at the AT&T Center. UTSA Roadrunners kicked off spring workouts yesterday with Jeff Trailer in his third season as head coach. However, high winds and chilly temperatures greeted the runners in their first workout on campus at UTSA. Big question and the good problem to have is can the Roadrunners top what they were able to do in Trailer's second season last year? The only thing the Roadrunners were not able to do is win their first bowl game. Former running back Sincere McCormick was back visiting teammates after completing his competition at the NFL Combine in Indianapolis. And for quarterback Frank Harris, he's about to start his last season in college football. This is my last time, you know, being the first time. So I'm um, kind of bittersweet. You got to just cherish those moments. Last year's last year's team. Um, this is a brand new team. So we got to go out there, you know, prove ourselves once again. I just wanted to come back and, you know, be a part of the, part of the, with these guys and, you know, be a part of the last season to be a part of Conference USA before I make the big move. And ultimately, you know, I want to come back and still try to work on my degree and try to finish up. So um, those are kind of things that I took into consideration. And but ultimately, you know, I made that decision on my own. And, you know, I'm you know, I'm very confident in that decision and happy to be back. 
Well, it doesn't get any easier for the Roadrunners next season. Just look who they opened the 2020 Sioux season against. That's Houston Army and the University of Texas in Austin beginning on September 3rd. And that's a look at morning sports. And congrats again to Coach Pop. Very exciting. Yes, tied it up. Time now, 442 and 46 degrees for now. I'll still have a look at some of the unique ways people all over the world are trying to help people in Ukraine. And next, a first look at how you can save money at the pump if you are planning to get away for spring break or during the upcoming summer. And welcome back. It's about 445. Rising gas prices are already having an effect on spring break and summer travel, but there are still ways to save money. ABC's Gia Benitez has the details in today's GMA First Look. In this morning's GMA First Look, what rising gas prices mean for your spring break and summer travel plans. Concerns the cost of travel could climb right as families book their spring break and summer vacation. The high price of oil will eventually get passed on to consumers in the form of higher ticket prices. The cost of oil climbing past $120 a barrel. That's higher than it's been in well over a decade. And now concerns it could go as high as $170 a barrel by the end of the week as global tensions rise. So if you're planning to travel, when should you book your flights to save the most money? Get those flights booked, especially if you're hoping to travel this summer or this fall or even in the winter. So what's the best way to still score a good deal? And what about those credit card points? Should you use them now or wait? We're going to have all the expert advice coming up at 7 a.m. With your GMA First Look, I'm Gio Benitez, ABC News, New York. Well, many people are looking for ways to help the people of Ukraine. Told on your sides, Marilyn Morris shows us what thousands are doing right now to make an immediate and personal impact. As Russian rockets pound Ukraine and millions flee their homes and country, Melody Gakin just booked a five-night stay in the war zone, but she's not going. This is a way I felt like I could put cash in someone's pocket. She logged on to Airbnb and was careful, she said, to search for a private individual host in Ukraine and not a corporation. She booked with a man named Barris in Kyiv. I followed up with an email to him and asked him to please donate those five nights to a refugee that might need a place to stay or that if they didn't feel comfortable doing that, that they were welcome to keep the money and use it for their family. It's grassroots generosity that's catching fire across social media and the world as a way to gift money fast and personally. Airbnb's co-founder tweeted, in 48 hours, 61,000 nights have been booked in Ukraine, $1.9 million going to hosts in need. I can just imagine, you know, how, how it is how they're living there and how afraid they are. And really, I mean, I paid $22 a night, which is nothing. I mean, I would spend that money going out to lunch. Melody's host responded with a simple thank you and a heart. Airbnb is waiving fees for all bookings in Ukraine so the hosts get all of the money. Also on its nonprofit side, it is helping people around the world host refugees. Marilyn Moritz, KSAT 12 News. And a quick look at the roads with Transguide. Looking there at Highway 90 and also 281, you see a little bit of sheen, but not too many problems on the roadways. Yeah, at this hour, Mike, it's a little hard to tell what's wet and what isn't out there on the roadways, but some of the roads do look a little damp this morning, and you wouldn't be surprised, right? No, not at all. I mean, we've got showers out there. Mm -hmm. uh, there's not a lot being reported at the usual reporting spots, and like I said, some may be evaporating, but that doesn't mean it's not going to be hitting the ground. Um, I saw a couple of uh, just little damp areas here and there, and that's almost almost worse than if it was really coming down because you know, you add that little bit of water to the dust, the oil on the road, and that makes things really uh, can be slippery. So just got to kind of take it easy. Yesterday, of course, we had clouds all day long, and then late in the afternoon, about dinner time, things started to clear out a little bit, and beautiful end of the day. Boy, it was cold and windy and felt like a great day. <clears throat> Excuse me, frog in my throat this morning. Uh, we've got that little bit of sheen that stuff was talking about over there at 410 over by the airport. And yeah, a lot of rain is showing up, uh, heavier rain and even a couple of thunderstorms heading in over toward Houston. And some of this, uh, yeah, there's a couple of spots where there's a little yellow showing up on the radar loop, which means slightly 
I don't know if I can use the word heavier, but uh, not just the light stuff, maybe a, a moderate shower here and there and just kind of scattered about moving on through the area. 47 is the temperature. Then you look at the dew point temperature and that's the measure of moisture in the atmosphere and it is 18 degrees lower. So you've got a really, really dry layer of air between where that rain is being detected on radar and the ground. So that's why a lot of it is evaporating before it reaches the ground. Obviously some is all right. We got a breeze out there this morning. 10, 15 mile per hour winds gusting to 21 here in town. Uh, 20 at Stinson. So wind chills. 35 Kerrville burning stage. 42 here in town and some 30s up around Balverde as well as New Braunfels. Rain's going to be kind of sticking around this morning. It's not going to be a lot of it. That nuisance sort of rain all the way through the rest of the morning. And then by uh, early afternoon, late morning, early afternoon, rain's going to continue to kind of come to an end. But those clouds stick around and that's going to help to keep temperatures on the cool side. Again, we'll only be about 50 low 50s later on today uh, start to break up a little bit later on tonight and then tomorrow we're going to have a lot more sunshine and then add a good oh gosh 10 15 degrees to temperatures tomorrow keep adding to that on Thursday then that all comes to an end because we got a doozy of a front moving on through here. All right, we've got some cold air covering most of the country, but nothing that just jumps off the map as of right now. But some of this cold air is going to start to kind of push down and work its way in our direction, but not until Friday morning early. So Friday is going to be one of those upside down days and uh, yeah, you won't need it. It's, it's going to almost be like Sunday into yesterday, Thursday into Friday. Very warm and then very, very cold and windy. 49 degrees at noon today. Cloudy, still a, a bit of a breeze out there. Enough of a breeze to make you notice it. And then 52 for a high temperature later on today with just plenty of clouds. Then tomorrow we'll see more sunshine. Make it up to 64, 75 on Thursday. Again, we go up and up and up and then boom. 55 starting off. That's going to be all about, you know, one, two in the morning and then 40 by late in the afternoon. Windy, a couple of showers around on Friday. Good looking weekend, but we have a couple of late season freezes and this would be the latest freezing temperature here in town since all the way back. Sarah Spivey looked this up. I think it was 2006. OK, wow. All right. It was like the 24th of uh, March when we hit it freezing. So but gorgeous weekend, of course, Sunday. I'm not even going to. That's mention. the time change. We treat <laughs> like Voldemort from Harry Potter. We, right. don't, we don't like talk to talk about, about it, about it nope. until it happens. I'm putting it on there, but I'm ignoring it. So. Okay. OK, all right. We will, too. Maybe we'll chat about it Friday if we have to. Mm, or, or Monday. <laughs> <laughs> when we're all extra sleepy. Sunday, I'll have to talk about it then. So. Yes. <laughs> it's called narcolepsy. Uh, <laughs> uh, 452, about 46 degrees. And coming up next, why the director of the new highly successful Dune movie says he's not happy with Oscars. Okay, uh, here are your lottery numbers this morning. Pick three, five, three, six, fireball seven. Daily four, number six, five, six, zero, fireball seven. Cash five, 24, 25, 27, 31, 35. Texas two step eight, 17, 31, 33, bonus ball 13. And your Powerball numbers 10, 43, 55, 59, 67, Powerball 2, Power Play 3. Good luck. The director of the film Dune is not happy with the Academy Awards and a new Netflix stand up special gets dark. For the latest on what's happening in Hollywood, here's ABC's Jason Nathanson. I've been having dreams about a girl. The director of Dune not happy with the decision to hand out some Oscars before the Oscars. I think that uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's a wrong decision. Denis Villeneuve yesterday afternoon at the annual lunch for Oscar nominees saying awarding some categories, including editing and sound, which Dune is nominated for an hour before the live show and then folding those winners into the telecast, robs some nominees of their moment to shine. I think it, it, these kind of people, they feel humiliated. And that's very sad to go when it's supposed to be a celebration. The Oscars air live March 27th on ABC. I tried. I tried antidepressants. I didn't like how I felt on them. I didn't feel like myself. And now that I'm on them, I'm like, yeah, me neither. It's the best. Taylor Tomlinson's new Netflix like stand-up special I gets dark, like funny, but dark. Going, Following the success of her first special, Quarter Life Crisis, in the new special, Look at You, she tells ABC Audio she explores issues including her recent bipolar diagnosis and her mom's death from cancer when Tomlinson was eight. I grew up with a lot of siblings and we all had a dark sense of humor about losing our mom because it's kind of the only way we could deal with it. And I think a lot of people who lose a parent young are like that. Look at you debuts on Netflix today. 
And happy birthday, Dawson, James Vanderbeek, turning 45 today, while Station 19 star Boris Kajo is 49. And that's what's happening in Hollywood. I'm Jason Nathanson, ABC News, Los Angeles. Time now, 457 and 45 degrees for now. Still ahead on GMSA, the latest on the war in Ukraine, where authorities estimate as many as 100,000 people may be trapped as thousands try to flee the war-torn country. And it's a big day for Apple fans. Well, what you'll expect from today's big product lunch coming up in Tech Bites. And checking the roads with TransSky. Not a lot of folks out there right now, but uh, again, the roads do wet, look wet in a few spots, including right there at 90 near 36th Street. We'll be back. Live from Case at 12, Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. I'm ABC's M. Wynn in Washington. The conflict in Ukraine presses on as officials are now warning of a humanitarian catastrophe unfolding just north of the capital, Kyiv. The latest coming up. Mid 40s and a bit damp out there in some spots. Mike says you might see a sprinkler or two on your way in to work or school. If you're in school this week, some folks are out for spring break. Good morning, everybody. It's Tuesday the 8th. Thanks for joining us this morning. What a cold spring break for some of us. Really funny. It's been on the raw side out there. Uh, it was so warm Sunday. Mike, I know you were out of town and you're back. And did you bring cold weather in from New England <laughs> with you? <laughs> yeah, because it was really darn cold up there. But uh, yeah, I mean, it was I mean, we asked for souvenirs from Boston, but come on. Yeah, it not was that. shorts on Sunday, jackets yesterday, jacket today, and then we're going to go up and then drop back down and then go up again. So it's called March around here. It's just called South Texas weather. 45 right now in town and which yeah, that number in, in itself is not bad bad, but you've got a couple of uh, sprinkles out there. There is some rain being reported out there at the airport. Notice that dew point is down to 31. So there's 15 degree difference, meaning they're fairly dry area of air uh, layer of air and some of this rain. Obviously, some is reaching the ground out there at the airport, but some may be evaporating before it ever reaches the ground. That's it. 52 for a high temperature later on today. So definitely a jacket and we'll have enough of a breeze. So you're going to feel that the aquifer went down seven tenths of a foot on yesterday's reading and the allergens. We have got just a whole list of everything out there. So a lot of different trees and plants and everything are in bloom. And speaking of plants, though, may want to cover them this weekend. We'll talk more about that in a second. Here's what's showing up on radar right now. And notice how some of these spots are starting to get a bit heavier uh, down there around Carn City, and this is going to be sliding in toward Floresville and around town. We've got uh, even a couple of heavier showers around Lavernia right now. Most of this is on the light side, and yes, there is some, uh, like I said, out there at the airport as of right now, and this is going to be pretty much a morning event as far as the rain. Pretty good breeze, uh, 10, 15 mile per hour winds. We've got some gusts on top of that, and yep, wind chill to deal with. 41 here in town. It's not brutally cold, but Again, just cold enough, and then with some of that moisture out there, it's that uh, sort of damp chill. And uh, yeah, a couple of showers around, breezy, cool this morning, and then cloudy skies, breezy, only 50, right around low 50s for a high temperature today. Big warm up then midweek, and don't get used to it. Don't put your coat away because cold front comes through Friday. We'll only be about 40 by the afternoon on Friday, and we're looking at another freeze Saturday and Sunday mornings. Then a big warm up right after that. All the details coming up in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority, Steve Cavazos. Morning, sir. What's uh, what's going on? Anything? Hey, good morning, Mike. Unfortunately, starting this Tuesday morning with some problems, I-10 at West Avenue. Let's get a closer look from TransGuide. Uh, first off, we can see that it doesn't appear that it is actually on the highway. We're looking at it possibly possibly being on the frontage road there, but notice that it does look like there could be some sheen out there. Notice that Stephanie was mentioning that from some of those TransGuide cameras a little bit earlier. So drivers just remember to take it slow out on the roads. That's always the best way to go, but pinpointing that crash, we have it located right here off of I-10 eastbound right near West Avenue. So drivers coming into the downtown San Antonio area from I-10 may encounter those flashing lights, so just make sure to give them plenty of room to get the scene cleared up. Let's get a wide look at the map at 503 this morning. No real concerns just yet. Still very young this early, but we're going to continue to watch the roads closely traveling into San Antonio. Good news is that you can take it easy this morning. 20, 25 minutes coming in from I-10 eastbound from Bernie. 27 if you're traveling from 281 southbound on Bulverde and 26 coming in from 35 southbound and New Braunfels. No concerns there, but we'll watch this crash closely and let you know how that impacts that morning drive. Mark Stephanie. Thank you, Stephen. New this morning, San Antonio police left with a lot of questions after an overnight shooting. This happened just uh, after 2.30 this morning on Avenue E near East Houston Street in the Alamo. Police tell us the victim is a man in his 20s. Right now, investigators don't have much to go on, but we do know the victim was found in the middle of the street. 
SAPD say, says he'd been shot one time in the back, so as of now, police do not have any suspect information. As for that victim, he was rushed to a hospital and is expected to be okay. And this morning, police are also looking for a person who shot at a couple of teens hitting one of them. It happened on the city's south side on Pleasanton Road near Formosa. Officers say that the victims were walking when someone in a dark truck drove by and fired a single bullet, hitting a 16-year-old boy in the groin. They were able to get help at a nearby grocery store. However, the suspect took off. There is a new development or are new developments in the deadly case of child abuse out in Hondo. Police have arrested 23 year old Carlos Padron in connection with the death of his one month old baby. Officers first responded to a call for a child that wasn't breathing back on February 16th. The child was airlifted to a hospital where he died. Padron now faces a first degree felony in the case. Police say this isn't the first time he's faced a family violence charge. Happening later today, VIA will be holding a meeting starting at 7 p.m. to get community input on their proposed bus route changes. Tonight's meeting will be in English and tomorrow's meeting will be in Spanish. Both meetings will be held virtually. There are a total of 48 bus routes that will be affected by the proposed changes, which would go into effect in May. You can see the full list of the routes by visiting the same website on your screen. Ukrainians continue to hold back Russia's assault against their cities. And as ABC's M1 reports, a new ceasefire is set for this morning to allow civilians to escape. This morning, Russia declaring another ceasefire to open humanitarian corridors out of the capital, Kyiv, and other major cities. But Ukrainian leaders remain skeptical since similar efforts in recent days have failed. This comes amid warnings of a humanitarian catastrophe unfolding just north of Kyiv, where Ukrainian officials say as many as 100,000 people may be trapped, some already going a week without water or electricity. Russian troops still targeting civilian areas, driving many from their homes. Already more than 1.7 million people have fled the country, about 800,000 of those refugees' children. You know, to, uh, to be with little baby, and run away from uh, my family. It's very hard because I'm alone here and uh, I have no support. Now, growing fears Russia could target the flow of weapons being delivered to Ukrainian forces. A senior U.S. official tells ABC News there are strong indications Russia is going to attack supply chains, possibly even hitting a convoy of weapons heading to Ukraine in Poland. As a member of NATO since 1999, that would be an attack on the entire alliance. That's a game changer. Meanwhile, Ukrainian President Zelensky speaking to ABC's David Muir, pleading for a no-fly zone and ending with this message to Americans. If you see and if you understand how we feel life, how we fight against all the enemies for our freedom, support us. Support us. And not only with words, with concrete, direct steps. Do it. And you, and I think... I think we'll, we'll, we'll win. Russia and Ukraine's foreign ministers have agreed to meet this Thursday for high-level talks on the sidelines of a diplomatic forum in Turkey. M. Wynn, ABC News, Washington. Well, here at home, on a lighter note, we're officially less than a month away from Fiesta. Right now on KSAT.com, we have a full list of events that will be broadcast right here on KSAT and streamed on our website. To see the full list of all the events taking place this year, scan the QR code on your screen. Very exciting. Time now, 5.08 and about 44 degrees for now. Still ahead, we're getting a sneak peek into Apple's first product launch of the year that is happening later today. Also up next, we'll look at how a specialized team at an area hospital is trained to look for signs of child abuse. And outside with live cam, 44 degrees, damp here and there, maybe a shower or two, just kind of a ugly start to our Tuesday, but you're watching GMSA. Go back just about 512 teachers and hospital staff are often on the uh, first line of protection for our children in our community who suffer from child abuse and neglect. And Methodist Children's Hospital has a specialty child abuse resource and education team or care team trained to look for the signs. Nurses and staff who suspect child abuse can call the care team to help assess the situation. Then they decide whether or not there's enough evidence to take the case to law enforcement and child protective services.
We do a focused head-to-toe assessment focusing for signs of non-accidental trauma or neglect. Uh, we also do photo documentation of any injuries or anything that we might find suspicious for uh, child abuse or neglect. According to data just released, the total number of child deaths related to abuse in Texas dropped in 2021 to 199 from 251 in 2020. However, the number of child deaths in Bear County remained the same at 13. Now approaching 513, still 44 degrees. Still ahead, what you need to know about hackers that recently breached Samsung's company data for Galaxy smartphones. Plus, which browser do you think is faster on a Mac, Safari or Google Chrome? We have the answer next. Ghirardelli Intense Dark. Old. Rich. delicious dark chocolate. Ghirardelli Intense Dark. Makes life a bite better. Meet the four-year-old who refused to wear pants this morning. Why, Andy? I'm a dinosaur. Won't wear pants. We'll eat Eggo waffles. Get your wins where you can when you Lego with Eggo. For people who could use a lift, new Neutrogena Rapid Firming, a triple lift serum with pure collagen. 92% saw visibly firmer skin in just four weeks. <gasps> Neutrogena for people with skin. 516, welcome back. Apple holding its first product launch of the year today. ABC's Andrew Dimmert has details on what is expected in today's Tech Bytes. Today's Tech Bytes, Apple is just hours away from its first product launch of the year. It's expected to announce a new version of its low-cost iPhone SE, possibly with 5G. An updated iPad Air may be unveiled with the latest mobile chip, and there may be new colors, including a dark green iPhone 13. Samsung says hackers stole internal company data and source codes for Galaxy devices. The same group claiming responsibility recently breached a company that makes microchips and then tried to blackmail that company. Samsung insists no personal data from customers or employees was stolen. Finally, a new beef between Google and Apple. Google is claiming its Chrome 99 web browser is significantly faster on Mac OS and Android, and Google says Chrome even out performs Apple's Safari browser. So far, no response from Apple, but it looks like even internet traffic is driving some people crazy. Those are your Tech bites. Have a great day. He's right. Google says Chrome is faster on Mac. Mm -hmm. Got it. Yeah. All right. Well, let's see the traffic here in our area. It doesn't look too bad, at least at this hour. Yeah, at least it's not dial-up that we're talking about, right? <laughs> that was that was something. Uh, but yeah, traffic's not moving fast. In fact, we're not really seeing any traffic at all from these TransGuide cameras as we get a look around town. 1604 at Pat Booker now. We received some word from TransGuide that there were some traffic-like issues out there. So just watch out, drive carefully. But this is going to be the main problem. We just saw that shot at TransGuide near I-10 at West Avenue. A crash that actually happened on the frontage road. Let's go ahead and take you to the map because we're picking that up in the eastbound lanes of I-10 at West Avenue, not causing problems, but it does look like a few more first responders have showed up out there to clear the scene. So drive carefully through there. Let's take a drive over here to I-10 a little bit further towards Seguin. Now there is some barrier installation that's been going on there. It started overnight, uh, but we'll be wrapping up tomorrow morning, March 9th, around 530 in the morning. Keep in mind, we're already seeing a slight buildup of traffic, but this is for those overnight early morning commuters. What drivers can expect is an alternating east main main lane closure from file road to FM 2538. Let's get that bird's eye view of the map 518. It is a quiet start. However, we do have those issues out there that we're going to continue to track, namely off of I 10 West, but it doesn't appear that it's impacting drivers commute. Just remember to buckle up and drive safe. Got yes, sir. Thank you, Stephen. Yeah, not too bad. And the picture behind you says March, although it doesn't feel like March. No, it will, and it's oh. going to feel even warmer than March coming up here in the next couple of days. Um, a lot of folks have, have planted. You may want to cover your plants for, uh, Friday night and Saturday night because we do have a couple of freezes in store. So that's absolutely beautiful. A bonfire patio peach, that's the most delicate color of pink. That's a great shade. Thank you very much for that. Yeah, keep sending in all those pictures. I know uh, there's uh, some folks that have already started to spot a couple of blue bonnets around the area. So just 
keep those coming when they start to, if you see them there. And if you do take pictures, make sure you do it safely along the sides of the road. All right, got a couple of, uh, as you can see, th that sheen on the road over there by 410. We do have a few showers that are being reported out at the airport. The majority of rain is well off to the east. Even a couple of uh, lightning strikes are being picked up there in uh, southern Gonzales County. Everything is sliding up to the north and a couple of decent showers here and there. Same thing down around Carn City. And again, most of this in and around town is on the light side. It's that nuisance kind of rain. It mixes with the oil and dirt on the roads when it's this light and that makes things kind of slippery. So this is going to be sticking around throughout the basically first portion of the day throughout the rest of the morning and then most of it's going to be out of here by late morning by right around noon early afternoon. But then we keep a lot of clouds around throughout the day breezy enough and temperatures are only going to be in the low 50s today. Then some clearing tonight and a lot of it tomorrow afternoon. That's going to help with the big warm up. We'll make it up into the mid 60s tomorrow, so about 15 degrees warmer by tomorrow and then add to that again by Thursday. Then things start to change. Wind is out of the uh, north about 10 15 miles per hour. Some good gusts out there. So yep, wind chills to deal with this morning. Like I said, it's going to be breezy enough throughout the rest of today. So temperatures really start to go up again about you know 15 degrees or so uh, over the next couple of days 75 then on Thursday then the front comes through here that's the afternoon temperature we'll start off right around mid upper 50s in the morning and temperatures will be dropping down and then look at that it's almost cut and paste it's almost the same thing we get that big jump up 20 degree difference between Friday afternoon and Saturday afternoon because a lot of clouds on Friday and then more sunshine on Saturday. However, Saturday morning and Sunday morning, we are looking at some freezes around here. 49 degrees today at noon, cloudy, breezy conditions, and most of the light showers, which are primarily off to the east, are going to continue to kind of move on out of here throughout the late morning hours. 52, cloudy, somewhat breezy later on this afternoon, and then the next couple of days, we are going to make it right around uh, 40 tomorrow morning starting off, and then 64 in the afternoon, 75 Thursday, and then the bottom drops out, so we'll go from 55 early Friday morning down to 40, and then those two freezing regions. Meetings. It's going to be it'll be close call here in town, definitely in the hill country. 60, 68, Saturday and Sunday, respectively. Of course, set your clocks forward before you go to bed Saturday. And then look at that, 80 on Monday. Wow. Yeah. Go from <laughs> I, 32 Sunday morning, 80 Monday. I think afternoon. Friday's going to be a shock for some people after mm -hmm. having a little warm on Thursday. Yeah. yeah. It's going to be a grilled cheese and soup kind of a day. All right. Again. 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 Yep. <laughs> 522 about 44 degrees and Lady Gaga announcing a brand new tour date and we're going to hear from the star of a journal for Jordan that's next in your morning spotlight. Big three number 536 fireball seven daily four number 6560 fireball seven. Cash five 24 25 27 31 35 and your Texas two step eight 17 31 33 bonus ball 13. Your Powerball number is 10, 43, 55, 59, 67, Powerball 2, Power Play 3. Good luck. Welcome back, 525 fans of a particular music superstar hoping the third time is the charm. CNN's David Daniel has that and more in today's Hollywood Minute. I don't need a reason. Two years after Lady Gaga released Chromatica, shortly after COVID-19 hit, she's finally hitting the road to support the album. She's announced 15 Chromatica Ball summer tour dates, beginning in Europe in July, then moving to North America in August and early September. Some of the shows are rescheduled from her two earlier attempts at the tour, and previously purchased tickets will be accepted. More info at LadyGaga.com slash tour. Do you want to talk? No. Jordan Monroe King, look at me. A journal for Jordan was based on a true story, something that young star Jalen Christian says he did not take lightly. Not only is this a character, but it's actually like a real life person. And in any character you do, you have to honor that because you're living someone's life, whether or not they may be alive or not living anymore. So I knew I'd get in the right mindset and just do my best to make sure he felt seen and represented. A Journal for Jordan is now on Blu-ray and DVD. In Hollywood, I'm David Daniel. 
Five twenty-six, about 44 degrees. And still ahead on GMSA, we are checking out some of the record gas prices people are seeing across the country. It's astounding, actually. Plus, why a well-intended intended movie to boycott Russian vodka might actually be targeting the wrong business owners and vodka brands. Plus, why leaders of several states are looking into how TikTok is affecting the mental health of children. Making headlines this morning, the United States now seeing officially some of the highest gas prices ever seen. And taking a look outside with a live cam, we're starting off cold again. We're at 44 degrees, expecting a brief warm up in a couple of days, but for right now, it's just cold. Good morning, everybody. It is Tuesday, March 8th. Thanks for joining us. Yeah, today is a day for warm coffee. Definitely really cold out there. Let's check you with Mike Ostrage on our rain chances today. Yeah, we got a few showers around this morning and then later on this afternoon, rain's pretty much going to be going away and it's not like it's raining everywhere right now. Over there by the airport, of course, we keep looking at that slight reflection there off of the uh, the pavement on 410 and there is uh, some light rain being reported at the airport 45 right now dew points at 31 so with that big difference between those 14 degrees between those two numbers a really dry layer of air and that's why a lot of the rain yeah some is obviously reaching the ground but a lot of it is evaporating before it reaches the ground we've got a decent breeze out of the northeast at eight miles per hour here's what's showing up on radar and again cut the area right in half along 281 37 and the majority of the rain is off to the east even a couple of uh, heavier showers, a couple of lightning strikes too off to the east and some it uh, well, looks like it's heading up in towards San Marcos right there or just to the east of San Marcos. Just a few light scattered showers around town. The breeze is out there this morning. We do have some wind gusts, 15, 20 miles per hour. And so, of course, we've got somewhat of a wind chill to deal with. And it's going to be breezy enough throughout the, the afternoon with those cloudy skies and temperatures only in the low 50s later on today. And you'll definitely notice the wind chill. Boy, there is just a slew of allergens out there. Everything is kind of coming into bloom, I guess. And 49 degrees at noon, 52 for a high temperature. Lots of clouds, a couple of showers just primarily in the morning. They'll start to taper off and slide off to the east. And then, we, like I said, just keep the clouds around here. Northeasterly wind at 10 to 15 miles per hour. So chilly today. Warm up night by a couple of big leaps and bounds the next couple of days, and then you fall off. Temperatures fall off during the day on Friday. We'll talk about the weekend coming up in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority, Stephen Cavazos. All right, some damp roads. Any problems? Yeah, unfortunately, Mike, we still have this issue off I-10 at West Avenue. Thankfully, not on the highway, but we are seeing some problems right there along the frontage road. We're hoping the driver's okay, but uh, not causing an issue for drivers that are trying to make their way in those eastbound lanes of I-10. You can see, especially here on the highway, things are fine, but we have seen some of those damp roads out there. So drive carefully and make sure that you are alert this morning. Let's take you right to the map because we're picking that up again. The eastbound lanes of I-10 at West Avenue not causing problems as we're seeing on our map. Those lanes are still green, so that's some good news. Let's get a wide look right now. 532. We're getting closer to 6 a.m. and thankfully it's still pretty much a green start to this morning. But just again, remember to take it easy. You don't have to rush, especially if you're traveling into San Antonio from any of these communities. I-10 westbound coming in from Seguin. We're looking at just a 29 minute drive time. Pretty nice. 23 minutes if you're coming in from 87 and Lavernia in those northbound lanes. And right now, 28 minutes. Flotusville coming into this downtown San Antonio area. So no problems there. We are seeing some issues here, though, off I-10 at West Avenue. Again, we're going to continue to watch this closely, and we'll see how that impacts your morning drive. Mark Stephanie. Sir, new this morning, San Antonio police left with a lot of questions after an overnight shooting downtown. RJ Marquez joins us live with the details. And RJ, what can you tell us right now? Yeah, good morning, Mark and Stephanie. Right now, investigators don't have much to go on, but uh, when they received this call, in fact, they didn't know that this was a, whether this was a person who was just sick, maybe injured, um, or whether this was just kind of a welfare call. So paramedics showed up, and so San Antonio Fire Department did as well. They later determined that this person had actually been shot, and we do know that the victim was found in the middle of the street. So this all happened this morning just after 2.30 a.m. on Avenue E near East Houston Street and the 
Alamo. Police telling us this morning that the victim is, in fact, a man in his 20s. He was shot once in the back. So that's what they later determined. And at this point, it's still unclear just how this all happened. We're told witnesses in the area heard the gunshots, but didn't hear or see anyone leaving the area. So, so as of right now, police do not have any suspect information. And as for the victim, he was rushed to the hospital, but police telling us this morning that he is expected to be okay. So we will continue to follow this as police uh, maybe reveal some later details as they continue to investigate this shooting. Reporting live from downtown, RJ Marquez, Case at 12 News. Thank you, RJ. Castroville's police chief could learn his fate later today. There is a city council meeting scheduled for this evening at 5 p.m. Now, this comes after police chief Brian Jackson was accused of using a racial slur several times during a murder investigation. Now, according to an online agenda, members are set to discuss possible disciplinary options after the issue was tabled last week. The concern was brought to light by the Medina County Sheriff, who says he heard the inappropriate language caught on body camera. Castroville's city council previously placed Jackson on administrative leave after an hours long meeting last month. You will continue to see some sticker shock the next time your vehicle needs to be filled up here in San Antonio. We're seeing an average price of at least three thirty five a gallon. And as CNN's John Lawrence reports, gas prices in some parts of the U.S. are hitting levels never seen before. The cost of filling up is going up. 88, yeah. <laughs> That's a lot more than I thought it'd be. According to the Oil Price Information Service, the national average for a gallon of regular gas is $4.14 as of Monday night. That breaks the record set during the summer of 2008 by three cents. We're definitely watching our pennies on where we spend it, you know, but for the most part, I mean, it's, it's kind of kicking our, our behind. <laughs> Analysts say the crisis in Ukraine is fueling the latest price hike. Because of the actions of President Putin, because he invaded a sovereign country, that created instability in the markets. While the White House said oil producers have the profits and permits to drill more, some Republicans say the situation can be improved from within. This White House seems determined to go hat in hand and beg every bad actor around the world to ramp up their own fossil fuel production but still will not stop their holy war against our own American energy production here at home. Americans probably won't be getting a break in the near future. The oil price information service says a national average of five bucks a gallon is possible. Many California commuters are already paying more than that. You know, not a thing. There's nothing to do except deal with it. I'm John Lawrence reporting. President Biden will be in North Texas later today. His trip to Fort Worth is personal as he's expected to talk with veterans and caregivers. The president pushing for more help for members of the military who face health problems after exposure to burn pits. Biden raised the prospect in his State of the Union address last week as whether being near toxic burn pits in Iraq led to the death of his son, Bo. The president calling on Congress to provide health care benefits to veterans of Iraq and Afghanistan who faith face health consequences because of burn pit exposure. U.S. troops, including some from Texas, are going to Europe to help NATO with the Russia-Ukraine war. And we're told 7,000 U.S. military personnel are earmarked for the journey. So far, 160 soldiers from Fort Hood have been deployed. Some will move heavy machinery and cargo. Commanding officers say the soldiers and their families are prepared. A man's in custody in Kansas accused, accused rather, of stealing dozens of parking meters. Topeka police say 32-year-old David Allen Brookins pried the meters open to get changed, then put them in a shopping cart and hauled them away. Ms. Hay Brookins stole a total of 26 meters. He's charged with theft and aggravated criminal damage. Police don't know when the meters will be back on the streets or how much it will cost to repair them. Since they say the meters aren't there, parking enforcement cannot issue citations. Time now, 538 and 44 degrees out there. So ahead, why some doctors say you should be cautious about exposing kids to social video platforms like TikTok. Also next, many states, including Texas, are urging liquor store owners to stop selling Russian vodka to support Ukraine. However, the move is having unintended results. And not all those vodkas are Russian. All right, let's go outside with live cam. If you're just now tuning in, it's chilly out there. You probably uh, heard the furnace kick on overnight. Some low and mid-level clouds, chilly temperatures, and a dash of rain here or there. We'll talk to Mike coming up.
541 backlash against Russia is involving Texas liquor stores. Governor Abbott has called on owners to voluntarily take Russian products off shelves. At least eight other states are doing the same. However, CNN's Jen Sullivan reports as having unintended results. A growing number of states are boycotting Russian-made booze in support of Ukraine. I have no intentions of bringing them back. Officials in at least eight states, including Ohio, Utah, Oregon, North Carolina, Alabama, Pennsylvania, West Virginia, and New Hampshire are calling on liquor stores to remove Russian-made or Russian-branded products from their shelves. We sell anywhere around $20 million of, of uh, Russian-based product at any given over the course of any given year out of the billion dollars or so of, of uh, spirits that we do sell. So um, it does have some impact. But experts say the move may miss the intended target because few alcohol brands are imported from Russia and sold in the U.S. In fact, many of the top-selling vodka brands with Russian origins are now distilled in other countries, including the U.S. Boom. That's how we feel about it. One example, Stoli Vodka, which is only Russian by name. The vodka is actually made in Latvia, and the company is headquartered in Luxembourg. The invasion triggered a rebrand with the company, announcing it will be sold and marketed only as Stoli. Another example is Smirnoff. Although the brand traces its heritage to 19th century Russia, the company has long been owned by a British spirits company and is manufactured in Illinois. I suppose if there were a Russian beer or a Russian wine, that's coming off the shelves too. Two of the few vodka brands actually produced in Russia are Russian Standard and Greenmark. For today's Consumer Watch, I'm Jen Sullivan. 543, about 44 degrees. And coming up next, why several attorneys general are opening an investigation into TikTok about the social media's effect on kids' mental health. In your morning consumer headlines, new data shows side effects from the mRNA COVID-19 vaccine are mostly mild and only last a few days. Researchers with the Centers for Disease Control and Provision examined more than 300,000 cases from the adverse vaccine reporting system. They found 92% of cases were mild, nearly 7% were serious. The most common serious side effect was difficulty breathing, fever, fatigue, and headache. A group of attorneys general in several states across the country have opened an investigation whether TikTok is harmful for children. The investigation is aimed at seeing whether the companies behind the social media accounts violated consumer protection laws and put children at risk. Some pediatricians say social media can affect children's mental health. Doctors say parents and kids need to be aware of potential dangers, and if a child is already suffering from a mental health issue like depression or anxiety, there's a higher risk of adverse effects of social media. And attention, Generation X, there is a chance you're not as smart as you could be because of lead poisoning. A new study shows almost everyone who was born between the years of 1961 and 1980 were exposed to dangerous levels of lead. Now, according to that study, about 170 million people in the U.S. had dangerous levels of lead in their blood during their early childhood years. The study's authors blame lead to gasoline, which was commonly used to fuel cars in the 1960s and 70s. All told, about 53% of the total population had high levels of lead in their blood as children. Interesting. 547, about 44. Let's go ahead and check in with Stephen Cavazos. At last check, the roads didn't look too bad. And you know, I come bearing good news. That crash that we talked about earlier this morning off I-10 at West Avenue. Good news is our first responders were able to get that cleared up uh, just in time before we get to that 6 a.m. hour. So a special shout out to them and for all the work that they're doing out there. 37 at Fair Avenue. Traffic is light, but we can expect more folks out there as morning does go on. That crash uh, what we talked about was off the eastbound lanes of I-10. So again, no need to worry through there, but we did notice some of the damp roads out on the trans guide camera. So just remember to drive carefully through those spots. Let's take that drive over here a little bit further toward 410 eastbound at Evers Road. We do have stalls that are now seeming to pop up here. This one not causing issues, but as I mentioned, the trend continues as we come down here to I-35 northbound at Palo Alto Road. Let's get that wide look at the map 548. Thankfully, no other problems to report just yet. The morning's still pretty young, but we are going to be seeing people get out there as they ready to head to work, maybe grab that cup of coffee, but not right now, not going to find any problems problems out there on the roadways, but flashing lights here at 1604 at Pat Booker. Those lights are actually not working right now, so just remember to be alert on the roadways this morning, guys. We will. And I'm assuming that's Woodlawn Lake. That looks yeah. beautiful. Mr. McClellan over there at uh, Woodlawn Lake. Absolutely gorgeous. A lot of clouds all day long yesterday, but of course, by late in the day, we started to uh, clear out some. Light. 
And like I said, clearing line showed up just in time for a gorgeous sunset shot. Thank you very much for that one. I don't think we're going to be seeing any good uh, sunrises or sunsets today. A lot of clouds around here, and they're going to be pretty stubborn throughout the rest of the day. And uh, I noticed on some of those trans guide cameras, Stephen was just showing one of them looks like the road is dry. The next one may be on the damp side. So there's been a couple of sprinkles out there, and that's the situation over there by the airport. Had a few, uh, actually, thunders. Uh, clouds there and uh, some lightning strikes in eastern Wilson County. A couple of decent cells and then right around Gonzales further off to the east and all this is kind of sliding up to the uh, northeast and just to the east of San Marcos as well. So that's a, a decent cell. So you are getting some pretty good downpours right there in eastern Wilson County, but the majority of this, that, that is somewhat the exception rather than the rule. The majority is just on the, the light side, and all this, the heavier rain, will be staying well off to the east of us. Nothing's being detected on radar as of right now, and then a lot of it, the real light stuff, is still evaporating before it uh, reaches the ground just because the air is so dry out there. We've got a wind out of the north to northeast at 10, 15 miles per hour, about uh, 20 mile per hour wind gusts, 14 up the road in Canyon Lake. So we do have some wind chills this morning and it will be breezy enough throughout the day to where you'll kind of feel that. All right, this is deceiving. So in the in the books, we hit a high yesterday of 71 degrees. That was a just before one o'clock in the morning. Of course, then that front moved on through here. Obviously, the front was through the hill country sooner. So that's where pretty much were actually that was the high. Uh, it early morning hours. We were only in the low 50s throughout the day yesterday, low to mid 50s. So deceiving numbers, but today, yeah, it's, it's, everybody's going to be on the cool side right around 50s, even a couple of 60s, especially down to the, uh, the west and to the uh, southwest, but metropolitan area is going to be low to mid 50s on average. And as far as the humidity, now we are fairly dry with humidity, and that's why, like I said, some of that rain is evaporating before it reaches the ground. Drier air is going to continue to move in here tomorrow. Then the humidity makes a return going into later Thursday and then early Friday morning. And as this humidity comes back in Thursday morning, they actually see some fog around here. And then this is right before the front moves through. Front comes through and dew points, moisture in the atmosphere drop off. And with that very, very dry air and some colder air coming on in here, that's what's going to uh, help to allow temperatures get down close to freezing again by Saturday morning as well as Sunday morning. 49 today at noon, cloudy, a couple of, uh, well, couple of breaks here and there maybe in the clouds late today. Also breezy conditions 52 for a high temperature and again pretty much just cloudy skies. If you see some sunshine, consider yourself kind of lucky 64 tomorrow 75 Thursday. Some fog Thursday morning front comes through early Friday. So in the record books will be oh, about mid upper 50s for a high Friday, but that ain't going to be the temperature in the afternoon. It's only going to be about 40. <laughs> excuse the grammar, uh, windy and a couple of showers on Friday and then close to freezing Saturday and Sunday. It's like somebody else jumped into your body there for a second. <laughs> <laughs> it's like a whole different voice. Yeah. You walk out Friday morning and go, what happened yesterday? <laughs> There's somebody else. Yeah, okay, Mike, look at us. Okay, he's back. The shock of the temperatures, yeah. He's, he's back. Be Everybody right. beat Mike and his friends. 552, <laughs> about 44 degrees. And coming up, a 13-year-old girl turns into a giant red panda when she gets emotional. That's in the newest Disney Pixar film. We're going to have a special preview next. Good morning. Coming up here on GMA, the latest from inside Ukraine. As Russia steps up its attacks, so many civilians racing to escape. Ukraine's president delivering a defiant message while asking for more help from other countries. Pentagon Press Secretary John Kirby will join us live this morning. You'll see that and so much more right here on GMA. I'm Maylin Lee. And ever since I turned 13, I've been doing my own thing. This is going to be the best year ever. Uh, yeah. And nothing's gonna get in my way. Right. Not so fast, an overachieving Chinese Canadian girl discovers she's turning red. Stay back! This happened already? What did you say? Her mother, voiced by Sandra O, oh, tries to counsel her. Our ancestors had a mystical connection with red pandas. Are you kidding me? This little quirk brought us in our family. Oh. While her briefly freaked out friends support her. I'm a freak. We love you, May. You're our girl. <sighs> Whoa. You're you. Any 
strong emotion yes! will release the panda. Good thing teenagers never have strong emotions, though that's what voice star Rosalie Chang likes about May. Her passion mm -hmm. and the way that she always sets her mind on something and goes for it 100%. The story is a personal one for filmmaker Domi Shi. I love being able to bring like my Chinese culture, my Canadian culture <laughs> to the big screen. Domi had such a strong sense of who these two main characters were. My whole life I've been perfect little May May. Ah! But maybe I like this new me. You know, we see our children as children from yeah. the very, very beginning. And it's difficult and bewildering when they turn into giant pandas <laughs> and don't do what we say. In Hollywood, I'm David Daniel. Well, some of you have been able to catch a screening of the new Batman film, but how many can say you actually watched the movie with a real bat? It's what happened at a movie theater up in Austin. Staff had to try to steer the bat towards an exit. You can watch the video right now. Click on this article on ksat.com. Well, today is International Women's Day, and women need all the energy they can get. Ahead in the next hour, GMSA, we're talking about the eight superfoods that can help perk you up all day long. Roads might be wet in a few spots. As a matter of fact, Mike is tracking a few storms that are dumping quite a bit of rain, but in some very isolated spots. Right now here in town, looking very good at 281 and Hildebrand. There's uh, 1604 at Pat Booker, where uh, Stephen Cavazos reports the traffic signals are out, and that's making things a little tricky. A four-way stop there at a major intersection. We'll be right back. This morning, San Antonio police left with questions after an overnight shooting in the downtown area. We'll tell you what we know so far. Well, one man's in the hospital with life-threatening injuries after he crashed his truck on the city's northwest side. We have details. And taking a look outside with live cam this morning, we are starting at 44 degrees. It is cold out there for the month of March. Live from Case at 12, Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. Good morning. It is Tuesday the 8th and some of you, believe it or not, are waking up to chilly temperatures and the rumble of thunder. I know such weird weather for spring break, but it is San Antonio and <laughs> it'll still be a good time off from school for a lot of you out there. That's right. Mike is here with more on what's happening out there. Good morning. Good morning. Hope you packed uh, a lot of different clothes for spring break. <laughs> <You're> right. <laughs> more than just shorts and flip flops because uh, yeah, you'll need those midweek and well later on the weekend, maybe. Yeah, but uh, uh, hopefully you got a jacket for spring break on top of that. We do have a couple of uh, showers out there. As you can see, nothing is showing up at the uh, on the, this camera right now, but you can see the sheen on the road. So roads are kind of damp here and there and not much is showing up obviously here in town, but we do have we talk about that rumble of thunder thunder right around uh, Nixon up around Gonzales. A couple of these cells and that's producing rain at the rate about an uh, inch per hour, maybe inch and a half per hour and some of those spots and they're moving along fairly well. So you are getting at least a decent shower here and there and very isolated, of course, because the rest of it is pretty much on the light side and all that will continue to kind of work its way off to the east throughout the rest of today. We'll have a few of these leftover showers this morning. Wind is out of the north uh, 15, 10, 15 miles per hour on average. Wind gust 26 New Braunfels, 21 out there at the airport. Wind chill temperatures 38 at the airport right now. Feels like 34 in Kerrville, 35 in New Braunfels. Definitely uh, bundle up and you're going to need a coat all day long. Yesterday's allergen count, there's a just laundry list, obviously, of allergens as some of the uh, trees kind of start to blossom a little bit more as we're transitioning into spring, or at least trying to, even though it really doesn't feel too much like it this morning. 44 degrees, and uh, we're not going to warm up all that much. We will barely crack 50 later on today. We'll make it into the upper 40s at noon. A couple of leftover showers around this morning, and then that rain is going to taper off later on this afternoon, and we'll have a high temperature, like I said, up to 52 degrees, and that's it. We'll see a big warm up midweek and then another big cold front move. Kind of an unusual late season cold front moving on through here. Going to be close to freezing. We'll talk about that and a closer look at the weekend coming up. Traffic Authority, Stephen Cavazos, what's going on, sir? Oh, thank goodness my car is already like a closet, Mike. Let's get a look at the roadways. 281 at Bitters. Traffic is moving and we're entering the 6 a.m. hour with a few more folks out there on the roadways as San Antonio continues to wake up. 281 at Hildebrand looking nice there, but there are some problems to be on the lookout for. We told you about some issues happening on 1604 at Pat Booker over on the northeast side. 
some traffic lights that have been experiencing some problems right here. Uh, unclear if that's a uh, if someone there working on the lights or actually a traffic stop, but you got to be careful out there and make sure that you are alert. Uh, we do have stalls also to talk about 410 eastbound at Evers Road, and that trend continues as we drive down here off I-35 northbound at Palo Alto Road. Wider look at the map at 603, though. We are not seeing major congestion just yet, but not a lot of folks are really out there this morning, but we are seeing more vehicles getting out on the roadways as the minutes do go by. And if you are traveling into San Antonio, good news is no delays. No need to rush to get out to the roadways or get to work because you're not going to see any slowdowns just yet. 37 northbound Pleasant Drive from Pleasanton with 28 minutes. Highway 90 coming in from Castroville in those eastbound lanes. Just 19 minutes right now and 17 if you're driving in from Lytle. A little time on those northbound lanes of 35. But we'll continue to watch the roadways closely. No problems to talk about just yet, but we do have construction spots. We're going to have more on that coming up in the next few minutes. Mark, Stephanie. Thank you, Stephen. New this morning, police are trying to piece together an overnight shooting that happened in the downtown area. Happened this morning just after 2.30 on Avenue E near East Houston Street and the Alamo. Right now, investigators don't have much to go on, but we're told the victim's a man in his 20s who was in, found in the middle of the street with a gunshot wound to the back. He was taken to a hospital and is expected to be okay. No suspects have been arrested. And another big story that we're continuing to follow closely this morning, the rise in gas prices. We have been telling you about how they're hitting people hard. Very hard. RJ Marquez live with what you need to know if you have to fill up this morning. Good morning, RJ. Yeah, good morning, Mark and Stephanie. So we're at the corner of San Pedro and Elmira. You can see behind me a couple of gas stations. And just from the short drive from our TV station over to this area, you saw kind of a big jump here, anywhere from 369 to 389. I'm going to jump out of the way and show you some of these prices here at this quick trip right here on San Pedro. So AAA reporting this morning that the average price for regular gas in San Antonio is actually 375 and a month ago it was $3. Across the state, we're still on the lower end. The average price in Texas is $3.85 and some counties out west are already seeing prices top $4. And so this morning we decided to check a few other sites to compare some of these prices. According to GasBuddy.com, the average price nationwide reached $4.11 a gallon. That set a new record on Monday. And according to the old price information service, the national per average for a gallon of regular gas is $4.14 as of last night. So that breaks the record set during the summer of 2008 by three cents analysis saying that the crisis in Ukraine is fueling the latest price hike. The White House says that oil producers um, that, uh, you know, oil producers have the permits to drill more and get this. They are also predicting that the price of oil from the oil information services says that the national average may actually top over five dollars a gallon. And that is definitely possible as we continue to see these gas prices on the rise. So this is a story that we'll continue to follow very closely, of course, and ahead in our next half hour, I will give you five simple tips and things that you need to know to help you save at the pump. Reporting live from downtown, RJ Marquez, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, RJ. Energy giant Shell says it will stop buying Russian oil and natural gas as well as shut down its service stations and other operations in the country amid an international pressure for companies to sever ties over the invasion of Ukraine. Shell said in a statement on Tuesday that it would withdraw from all Russian hydrocarbons, including crude oil, petroleum products, natural gas, and liquefied natural gas in a phased manner. The decision comes just days after Ukraine's foreign minister criticized Shell for continuing to buy Russian oil, lashing out at the company for continuing to do business with President Vladimir Putin's government. Now to the latest on the war in Ukraine. Uh, Russia declaring another ceasefire to open humanitarian corridors out of the capital of Kyiv and other major cities. But Ukrainian leaders remain skeptical since similar efforts in recent days have failed. This comes amid warnings of a humanitarian catastrophe unfolding just north of Kyiv, where Ukrainian officials say as many as 100,000 people may be trapped. Some people are already going on, on a week or more without water or electricity. We're going to have more on this coming up the next half hour of GMSA. Some other top stories that we're following this morning. Police are still looking for a person who shot at a couple of teens, hitting one of them. It happened on the city's south side on Pleasanton Road near Formosa. Officers tell us the victims were walking when someone in a dark truck drove by and fired a single shot, hitting a 16-year-old boy in the groin. 
They were able to get help at a nearby grocery store, but the suspect took off. San Antonio police say what started as a minor accident turned into something much bigger. Officer Nesta Reed is accused of theft, tampering with evidence, and obstruction of a roadway. Investigators say Reed hit a barrier early Saturday morning and caused damage to a patrol unit. But instead of telling his supervisor, police say he tried to hide the evidence, abandoning his vehicle on some railroad tracks on Indiana, just east of downtown San Antonio. Officers say he took the license plates off the unit and removed the city-issued laptop from the vehicle before leaving it on the tracks. Reed is a five-year veteran of SAPD. He's suspended without pay as the investigation continues. Teachers and hospital staff are often the first line of protection for children in our community who are suffering abuse and neglect. Methodist Children's Hospital has a specialty child abuse resource and education team or care team trained to look for the signs. Nurses and staff who suspect child abuse call the care team to help assess the situation. Then they decide whether or not there's enough evidence to take it to law enforcement and child protective services. We do a focused head to toe assessment, focusing for signs of non accidental trauma or neglect. Uh, we also do photo documentation of any injuries or anything that we might find suspicious for uh, child abuse or neglect. According to new data, the total number of child deaths related to abuse in Texas dropped in 2021. However, the number of child deaths in Bear County remain the same. Anyone who suspects a child of being abused or neglected should call police. Happening today, VIA will be holding a meeting and they're looking for your inputs. Sarah Costa joins us in the studio with all the details. Hey, good morning, Sarah. Morning. Good morning, Mark. Good morning, staff. And this is all an effort for things to get back to normal operations for VIA. That's why they are looking for community input on their proposed bus route changes. So tonight's meeting will start at 7 p.m. and this will be in English. There will be another meeting tomorrow that will be in Spanish. Both meetings will be held virtually. There are a total of 48 bus routes that will be affected by these proposed changes. Those changes would not go into effect until May. So we have all this information about these meetings on our website. Just head to ksat.com and look for this story. Mark and Steph. Thank you, ma'am. 610, about 44 degrees. And still ahead on GMSA, not only did our Spurs get a win last night, Coach Pop also moved closer to a massive career achievement. We're going to have those details. And just ahead, scammers had a banner year in 2021. We'll hear from the experts on how you can protect your personal information in 2022. And taking a look outside with live cam, not feeling like spring break for those who are off this week, but we are starting at 44 degrees. Bundle up. Welcome back at 614. In your morning tech bite, Samsung says hackers stole internal company data and source codes for Galaxy devices. The same group claiming responsibility recently breached a company that makes microchips and then tried to blackmail that company. Samsung insists no personal data from customers or employees was stolen. Well, sometimes it seems like we are overwhelmed by the number of calls we get every day from someone trying to sell you something you didn't ask for or promising something that sounds way too good to be true. ABC's Rena Roy has some advice about some things you can do to help avoid being a victim of a scam. 2021 was a banner year for scammers. The Federal Trade Commission received 2.8 million reports of fraud last year, and consumers lost almost $6 billion to fraud in 2021, up more than 70% from the previous year. This is the final attempt to reach you. So what are the best Can ways to protect yourself number? from falling victim to a scam? Hello. Consumer Reports has these tips. First, trust your gut. If you don't trust the person who's sending, if you don't recognize that that name, then there might be something something up. Think before you respond. Read texts or emails from people you don't know carefully or just ignore them. Don't answer a phone call right away from a number you don't know. Let it go to voicemail. Scammers try to get you to decide immediately before you have time to think about what they're offering. What they want to do is they want to short circuit your critical thinking. They want you to not think about what's happening and they want you to act quickly. Be very careful about clicking on links in a text or email from someone you don't recognize. Don't click on a link. If you have any uncertainty, you could put your device's security at risk. Hovering over a link will show the whole address, which might help you see if it's a scam and look to see how they want you to pay. Many times they will only want to be paid via 
peer-to-peer apps like Venmo or Zelle, or they might only want to be paid with a gift card, which you can buy at your local convenience store. And if any time you hear people telling you that those are the only methods of payments that are accepted, that's a red flag. You should not proceed. Remember that scammers are getting more sophisticated in their tactics. Experts say that being very cautious and skeptical about any pitch from someone you don't know is the best defense. Rena Roy, ABC News, New York. Time check just about 617. And I can see some flashing lights in some of our trans guide cameras. Let's go ahead and check in with Stephen Cavazos. Uh, definitely drivers want to be alert this morning. We do have some issues out there. 35 Caesars Travis, I 10th the Y. You can see that we do have a stalled vehicle off on the shoulder lane there. And there are a few issues that, again, drivers just need to be alert and aware of when they get on the roadways. Uh, we do have that stall here off 410 eastbound at Evers Road. We've had that there for quite a while now. So make sure you're driving carefully through that area. But we're seeing more of those stalls that are popping up as you just saw on the trans guide camera. Forgot to label this guy right here, but this is off I-10 westbound right there near Florida Street. So watch out in that direction, but let's go. There we go. I-35 northbound, pardon me, at Florida Street. Let's go ahead and drive down here because I mentioned some construction that is going to be going on overnight. Some bridge work actually off of 410 that started on Monday, February 28th, uh, wrapped up on March 7th, but uh, we're actually continu going to continue to see that work that's going to be going on there up until March 14th. So again, we still got a few days to go of this, a whole week really, uh, right there at West Military Drive to Marbach Road. Let's get that wide look at the map at 617. Thankfully, no congestion to report just yet. It's still quiet, but with issues like that on the roadways, again, drivers need to be aware of. Also, you just saw some flashing lights there off 1604 at Pat Booker. It appears those are crews working on the flashing lights or traffic lights that have been out for a little while now, guys. Thank you, Stephen. And those headed to school, definitely a coat. Oh, a yeah. Jacket. Yes. And uh, maybe a light little umbrella in some places because we do have a couple of showers here and there and actually a few thunderstorms well off to the east. Temperature in town right now, we're going to be staying right around the mid lower 40s. A couple of showers, breezy, and it's going to be breezy enough later on today. High temperatures in the uh, low 50s. So that's it. We're going to be well below normal. And this is. <laughs> Go out to the zoo. I love that caption. How about a kiss? Yes. <laughs> you can see him just all puckered up and ready for a kiss right there. And I'd forgotten about that yesterday, driving around uh, Mulberry near the zoo and everything. And boy, a ton of traffic out there. And today may not be the best day to go to the zoo. But it, Rain's not going to be an issue later on this afternoon, but the next couple of days are going to be fantastic for that. So thank you very much for the KSAC Connect picture. A uh, little bit of a sheen on the road over there by 410. We have had a couple of showers that have moved on through here. But again, the uh, biggest uh, story is off to the east of us. And these cells right here around uh, Hallisville, Gonzales, and working the way off to the uh, northeast. And there are some indications that maybe a little bit of pea-sized hail in a couple of those storms further off to the east. And as far as rainfall estimates, there were, um, well, a couple of storms dumped about. Now, this is just a radar estimate, not a ground measurement. Close to two inches of rain in southern uh, Gonzales County. And then also in north and eastern Wilson County, about a half an inch to an inch of rain fell. So again, those just those couple of bullseyes right there with those heavier storms. And those are continuing well off to the east, as you can see there, just to the east of Seguin. In town, just a few light sprinkly showers. The majority of rain is going to be staying well to the east throughout the day. We do keep a lot of clouds around though today. Rain's going to be coming to an end uh, and we'll continue to shift off to the east throughout the morning hours and then we just keep the clouds around this afternoon. Tomorrow we will see more sunshine after a somewhat uh, cloudy start and overall picture. We've got this disturbance right here, which is sliding on through the area. So that's what's trying to muster up a couple of these little showers here and keeping us on the cool side. Then everything kind of shifts around. We get this big flow coming in here from the southwest that helps to really warm things up. And then this low kind of moves on by the area and that's going to squeeze out a couple of showers. Front comes through early on Friday. We get some cold air coming on in here will clear out by Saturday and that's going to allow temperatures to really drop down. Very dry air moves in here. So that's what we're going to be seeing freezing temperatures Saturday morning as well as Sunday morning. Real close, uh, real close call. 49 degrees at noon today. Cloudy skies. It is going to be breezy. Leftover showers this morning and up through about late morning and then those will continue to work their way off to the east. 52 for a high temperature today. That's it. Still going to be very chilly out there. And then tomorrow, 
We start off at 40 and then get all the way up into the mid 60s. A lot more sunshine in the afternoon. 75 on Thursday, warm and humidity is going to start to come back in here. So we'll have some fog Thursday morning. Then that front moves through. Temperatures just uh, drop down pretty much overnight in through the afternoon. Only 40 in the afternoon on Friday. A couple of showers, windy and then freezing to start off Saturday and Sunday. Good looking weekend though. 60 and 68 respectively for high temperatures and get to enjoy that sunshine a little later into the day <laughs> on Sunday. I like how you like to cheer us up with sunflowers here on yeah. an otherwise <laughs> depressing day. Forward. Yeah, I'm trying to make the it time nice change. for us. Yeah. So thank you for that. We appreciate yeah, that. We'll, yeah, we'll focus on the flowers. Thank okay. you, Mike. Yeah, he's like, look over here, look over here. Don't look here. <laughs> 621, about 44 degrees. Our San Antonio Spurs get a bounce back win last night against the Lakers, and Coach Pop reaches a career milestone. We're going to have details coming up. If you have type 2 diabetes or high blood pressure, you're a target for chronic kidney disease. You can already have it and not know it. If you have chronic kidney disease, your kidney health could depend on what you do today. Farsiga is a pill that works in the kidneys to help slow the progression of chronic kidney disease. Farsiga can cause serious side effects, including dehydration, urinary tract or genital yeast infections in women and men, and low blood sugar. Ketoacidosis is a serious side effect that may lead to death. A rare life-threatening bacterial infection in the skin of the perineum could occur. Stop taking Farsiga and call your doctor right away if you have symptoms of this bacterial infection, an allergic reaction, or ketoacidosis. And don't take it if you are on dialysis. Take aim at chronic kidney disease by talking to your doctor and asking about Farsiga. If you can't afford your medication, AstraZeneca may be able to help. Farsiga. Spurs hosting the Lakers last night without LeBron out due to an alleged sore left knee. Uh, Silver and Black trying to help Coach Pop tie Don Nelson for all-time wins. And the Spurs off to a great start. DeJounte Murray had 26 points on the night. Jakob Pertle and Josh Richardson added 18 to help get the Spurs a win over the Lakers, 117-110. Last night's win gives Coach Pop the tie with Don Nelson for 1,335 victories. Pop chose mostly to ignore the achievement. He didn't mention it to players after the win and didn't take questions about the record during a brief three-question session with reporters afterwards. So next up, Pop will have a chance to pass Don Nelson for the most wins in coaching history with the NBA when the Spurs take on the Raptors. That game is set for tomorrow night. 7.30 at the AT&T Center. Go Spurs, go. And if you follow the San Antonio Zoo on Instagram, they have a cute post this morning. It says, uh, from zoological experts, we can positively identify a Coach Pop as the goat. Well, I have a little picture of a goat. It's really goat. cute. It's Coach Pop. <laughs> yeah. Greatest of all time. Greatest of all time, exactly. Which we knew before he even tied the yeah, record. Yeah, we knew it. Congrats, Pop. Time now, 626 and 44 degrees for now. Well, you've probably noticed now the unusually high gas prices ahead. The next half hour of GMSA will share several ways you can save some money on fuel. And an early morning crash on the city's northwest side has one man in the hospital. We're going to have the latest on his condition. And checking the roads with Transguide 410 at Marbach, 410 at Fredericksburg. We'll check on other parts of the city with our traffic expert, Stephen Cavazos, still to come. Let's go outside with live cam this morning. Just now waking up, we are hovering in the mid 40s out there. We have a few showers in the area, and Mike is also tracking a thunderstorm or two. We'll tell you where that is happening. Good morning, everybody. It is Tuesday, March 8th. Happy Tuesday. Thanks for joining us. And for some of you out there, happy spring break. Although, you know, we're at 44 degrees. Hopefully you have some indoor activities planned. Yeah, the forecast remains kind of a mixed bag of tricks this week. More trick than treat, right, Mike? Basically, yeah. I'm sure a lot of people on Sunday were like, oh, good, it's warm, it's spring mm -hmm. break. And then of course they were. Yesterday, if you were at the beach, you went, what is going on? <laughs> and same thing this morning. And then it's going to be back to uh, kind of spring break weather once we get in toward the middle part of the week. But that won't last forever. We've got winds coming in here out of the north. So, of course, uh, planes are landing there on runway four coming across 410. And it looks like there's still a bit of a, a sheen on the, the highway right now. Temperature stands at 44 at the airport. Dew points at 31. So big difference between these two. We've got some fairly dry air down here at the surface, dry layer of air, which is why uh, we haven't been seeing a whole bunch of rain. Uh, what was 
the aerial coverage, what was showing up on radar, a lot of that may have been evaporating before it uh, reached the ground. Wind out of the northeast at about uh, 13 miles per hour. Here's what's showing up on radar. And we've got some heavier rain off here to the east. And as Mark was saying, even a couple of uh, thunderstorm cells have been uh, showing up around here. All that continues to work its way out to these. But uh, around parts of Wilson County and Gonzales County, got a few bullseyes with some pretty hefty downpours, uh, half an inch, inch, uh, inch and a half or more of rain. But that was the exception rather than the rule. Most of this is just kind of some nuisance stuff. Wind again out of the north to northeast at 10, 15 uh, miles per hour. Got some gusts, 26 at the airport. Yes, we do have wind chill right now, so this is not spring break kind of weather. That's supposed to feel like 32 degrees spring break, at least here in town. But it will improve, and then it's going to get cold again. So we'll more on that in a second. Uh, yesterday's allergen count, just a whole slew of everything. So if your allergies are starting to fire up, that's probably the, the reason why. A couple of showers around the area, even a thunderstorm, mainly off to the east, breezy and cool, and that's going to be continuing to move on out of here throughout the rest of the morning. A few leftover showers, and then just cloudy skies today. Only low 50s with breezy conditions. Then we warm up. It's going to be nice big warm up um, up into the mid. 60s tomorrow, mid 70s on Thursday. That all changes though on Friday because Friday morning, if you're spring breaking again after shorts and flip flops on Thursday, you're going to wake up and go, What is going on around here? Because another front moves on through. It's going to be cold showers Friday and then more freezing temperatures to start off Saturday. I, I don't mean to chuckle, but more freezing temperatures to start off Saturday and Sunday. Just all over the place with everything. Details in it just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority, Stephen Cavazos, what's going on on the roads? Hey, good morning, Mike Oster. Page. Well, we have been seeing stalls all over the place, uh, really in the San Antonio area. This one reported here at I-10 at the Y. You can see that Transguide camera does pick up some flashing lights, uh, possibly a Texas hero truck that is working to assist that driver. It does look like that is happening off of the shoulder lane, so make sure that you move over or slow down. That is the law. Let's go ahead and take you to the map. We're going to put that right there at I-10 westbound near I-35. You can see, thankfully, no slowdowns in that direction, but again, make sure that you are watching out and being careful on the roadways this morning. Now, there were those stalls that were reported off of 410 and 35. Thankfully, those have cleared from the map and they don't appear to be causing any issues. We are entering morning rush hour with no real big problems or concerns on the roadways just yet. Uh, inbound times coming into San Antonio. Just keep in mind 24 minutes if you're coming from 87 and Lavernia. That is pretty much normal. But other than that, things are quiet and OK on the roadways. A little bit of a shaky shot there from Transguide, but we're going to watch the roads closely and give you those updates coming up in the next few minutes. Steph? Thank you, Stephen. New this morning, a man is in the hospital fighting for his life after an overnight crash on the city's northwest side. It happened around 2.15 this morning at I-10 in La Cantera. And that's where police say the driver crashed his pickup truck into a pillar. He was taken to the hospital with a head injury. At this time, it's not clear what caused this driver to crash. Now to the latest in gas prices. Americans now paying more than they have ever paid for gasoline. Last half hour, we told you about how they're hitting people very hard, these prices. But there is a little bit of good news. RJ Marcus is live with some simple things you can do to save at the pump. Good morning, RJ. Yeah, good morning, Stephanie and Mark. And you guys just said it right there. Hitting people hard, a lot of pain at the pump, and definitely getting into our wallets. And as we mentioned earlier, just a month ago, people here in San Antonio, we were paying about $3 for regular gas, and that was a gallon. This is according to AAA. Now the average this morning in the San Antonio area is $3.75, but we are still on the lower end compared to other Texas cities. They are seeing an average of about $3.85, including some counties out west that are seeing averages in the four dollars now so as we know that those prices are going to continue to go up but there is some ways that you can definitely save want to share those with you right now first try going to a wholesale store places like walmart and sam's club and grocery stores offer discounted gas keep in mind you may have to be patient because they are normally popular spots to fill up as anyone has driven by or seen for themselves tip number two check out loyalty programs for discounts and next make sure you've got apps to track the best prices in your area. Gas Buddy and the aforementioned AAA let you filter by the best price of gas, fuel rate, and distance. Also, pay in cash at the pump. You can save 5 to 10 cents a gallon when you pay in cash. And finally, when it comes to actually getting onto the roads, 
AAA says reducing highway speeds by about 5 to 10 miles per hour can increase fuel economy by as much as 14%. So according to Gas Buddy, another interesting thing here is that they say that the best day of the week to actually go get gas, maybe fill up, is Mondays, and that's the case across the country. They say that the worst days of the week are Thursdays and then also Wednesdays. So just keep that in mind. If you're going to fill up and just try and beat maybe this rise in gas prices, Monday is definitely the day for you to check out. So we have those tips available for you and much more. So reporting live, RG Marquez, KSAT 12 News. And that rise in gas prices, thanks in part, large part to the uncertainty caused by the Russian invasion of Ukraine. Sarah Costa is keeping an eye on headlines for us over there. Joins us live in the studio with more. Good morning. Good morning, Mark and Steph. You know, Russia has seen a lot of economic pushback across the globe, and here's another blow to them. Energy giant Shell says it will be stop buying Russian oil and natural gas, as well as shut down its service stations and other operations in the country amid international pressure. The decision comes just days after Ukraine's foreign minister criticized Shell for continuing to buy Russian oil, lashing out at the company for continuing to do business with President Vladimir Putin's government. Meanwhile, evacuations of people trying to get out of Ukrainian cities along safe routes has begun again. Previous attempts to lead civilians to safety crumbled with renewed attacks. But on Tuesday, video posted by Ukrainian officials showed buses with people moving along a snowy road from the eastern city of Sumy. Another video showed yellow buses with a red cross on them heading toward the southern port of Maripol. It was not clear how long this effort will last. You know, to... Uh to be with little baby and run away from uh, my family. It's very hard because I'm alone here and uh, I have no support. The Russian invasion has trapped people inside cities that are running low on food, water and medicine amid the biggest ground war in Europe since World War II. Officials say the amount of refugees out of Ukraine since the Russian invasion has reached two million. Stephanie. Thank you, Sarah. And U.S. troops, including some from Texas, are going to Europe to help NATO with Russia-Ukraine conflict. Now, we're told 7,000 U.S. military personnel are earmarked for the journey. So far, 160 soldiers from Fort Hood have been deployed. Some will move heavy machinery and cargo. Commanding officers say the soldiers and their families are prepared. Some of the top stories you're following this morning. There are new developments in the deadly case of child abuse over in Hondo. Police there have arrested 23-year-old Carlos Padron in connection with the death of his one-month-old baby. Officers first responded to a call for a child that wasn't breathing back on February 16th. The child was airlifted to a hospital where the baby died. Padron faces a first-degree felony in the case. Police say this is not the first time he's faced a family violence charge. And Castroville's police chief could learn his fate later today. There is a city council meeting scheduled for this evening at 5. Now, this comes after police chief Brian Jackson was accused of using a racial slur several times during a murder investigation. According to an online agenda, members are set to discuss possible disciplinary options after the issue was tabled last week. The concern was brought to light by the Medina County Sheriff, who says he heard the inappropriate language caught on body camera. Castroville City Council previously placed Jackson on administrative leave after an hours-long meeting last month. A Texas oil pipeline billionaire is suing Beta O'Rourke for defamation after the Democrat criticized his $1 million donation to Republican Governor Greg Abbott's campaign following last year's deadly winter blackout. O'Rourke is calling the lawsuit frivolous. The former presidential candidate has criticized Abbott for accepting a $1 million donation from Kelsey Warren, the chairman of Energy Transfer. O'Rourke says the two-term governor let energy companies off the hook by not mandating more significant industry oversight or weatherization. A spokeswoman for Abbott says their campaign has nothing to do with the lawsuit. President Joe Biden will be in North Texas later today. He is expected to talk with veterans and their caregivers in Fort Worth. The president is pushing for more help for members of the military who face health problems after exposure to burn pits. Biden raised the prospect in his State of the Union address last week as to whether being near toxic burn pits in Iraq led to the death of his son, Beau. The president is calling on Congress to provide health care benefits to veterans of Iraq and Afghanistan who face health care consequences because of burn pit exposure. Apple is hours away from its first product launch of the year. It's expected to announce a new version of its low-cost iPhone SE, possibly with 5G. An updated iPad Air may be unveiled with the latest mobile chip. 
And there may be new colors, including a dark green iPhone 13. Uber is raising its guidance for the first quarter, saying the ride-hailing business is bouncing back quickly from a lull induced by the Omicron variant. Uber's delivery business also seeing new growth. Well, happening later today, VIA will be holding a meeting starting at 7 p.m. to get input on their proposed bus route changes. Tonight's meeting will be in English, and there will be another meeting tomorrow in Spanish. Both meetings will be held virtually. There are a total of 48 bus routes that will be affected by the proposed changes, which would go into effect in May. You can see the full list of routes by visiting this story on our website at KSAT, actually on VIA's website, voinfo.net slash proposed changes. 641, about 44 degrees. On this International Women's Day, women need all the energy they can get. And ahead on GMSA, we're talking about the eight superfoods that can help perk you up all day long. Quarter to seven, we all know a healthy diet is important for everyone, but according to the CDC, only nine to 12% of us eat enough fruits and veggies. Certain foods are particularly beneficial for helping issues that affect women. Sarah Costa is here with a look at some of the foods that ladies may want to get next time they're at the grocery store. Good okay. Night. I just want to say, ladies, like, I really don't like it when people tell me to eat healthy. Right. But if there's a reason, like, they're like, oh, you won't get wrinkles if you eat this, then I'm like, okay, <laughs> I'm all in. So there are those certain foods that really do benefit us if you're a lady and men too. But this morning we are talking about eight of them specifically for ladies. So first up, edamame. It's full of fiber, good fats and estrogen like compounds, which may help control hot flashes during menopause or help with cramps during monthly cycles. Next, kale is loaded with vitamin K, which works to keep bones strong and healthy. Also consider spinach, Mark, you're making me laugh. <laughs> it contains folate, which is important for a baby's development during pregnancy. It also may lower a woman's risk for dementia and colon cancer. Next, beans are packed with protein and fiber. They can lower risk factors for heart disease. Papaya may reduce a woman's risk of cervical and breast cancer while also keeping cholesterol and blood pressure levels in check. Also, just eight ounces of plain yogurt gives you more than a third of your calcium for the day. And ground flaxseed can lower your risk for breast cancer. And here is another food that you can add to your list. This is like my favorite one, berries. They contain a lot of vitamin C, which women need to build collagen, which helps prevent you from getting those wrinkles. And that protein keeps your skin nice, smooth, and firm. They also may keep your brain sharp as you age. And in case you missed any of these foods we just mentioned, we will post all this information on ksac.com later this morning. To be clear, I, I was only joking that Kale was on the list and she's like, yeah, it is. <laughs> And as soon as I read it, I was like, uh -huh. yeah, yeah. But, it's there. But there are good benefits. I know. Yeah. And yeah. they say, hey, like, because, you know, the collagen bottles, mm -hmm. yeah. at, oh, my God, they can be up to $60. Very yeah, right. So if you just eat berries, you know. And if you're not a kale yeah, fan, I recommend the one at Chick-fil-A because it's not as big and leafy. <laughs> yes. It's small, a little more. Well, and they, they season it. Yeah. yeah. Well, um, or um, you get kale and you put the, you like roast and get it real crispy. Uh -huh. Oh, that's tips. like, okay. yeah, yeah gotcha. that's a good way to eat yeah. kale. All right. Yeah, we, we can get those veggies. Carefully going to wind up on SA Live with him. <laughs> uh, thank you, Sarah. Thanks, guys. Thank 647, about 44 degrees. Let's go ahead and check in with Stephen Cavazos now. All right, good morning, everyone. Right now, no problems to report on the roads just yet. You can see traffic is moving there at 410 and Marbach. No delays, uh, but we have seen stalls throughout the morning. Thankfully, nothing major. You can see traffic really picking up there at 410 at Fredericksburg. Let's get a look at the map, though, because the one stall that we've been seeing throughout the morning is I hear off I-10 westbound near 35 right at the Y spotting a little bit of a buildup in that direction. So you just got to watch out and make sure that you're giving people plenty of room to, to make sure they get their problem resolved. Let's get a wider look at the map at 648. We are in morning rush with really no need to rush, no delays or congestion. Just remember to take it slow out on the roads. And as we take one last look at Transguide 1604 at Pat Booker, it's 410 at Roland Ridge. Traffic is getting going and we'll have updates throughout the day, guys. Speaking of SA Live, we've had chefs on the show talking about kale and they say to, you really have to literally work it. And, and massage it almost to, to get it to, to be a little easier to chew. Yeah. Steven, are you a kale fan? No. Okay. All right. Try the Chick Fil A one. You're right no. about that one. I don't like Chick. I don't like. I don't like a kale. <laughs> no. Yeah. It's not yeah. Gonna happen. If you had, give you it had a try. Chop it up small enough, I guess. No. <laughs>
I, I have y'all seen this yet? The birds coming back in here? I love the caption, birds online. Uh, oh, that's cute. I was driving on 410 yesterday right near the interchange with 281 and one of the road signs and just lined up all the way across there. So that's always kind of, it's cool looking, but it's like, yeah, where's Tippy Hedren, you know? So, um, reference to the movie The Birds, if we weren't get, catching on that one. We do have a lot of clouds out there this morning. It doesn't look like there's as much of a sheen on 410, but some of those uh, Transguide cameras, Steve was just showing, some of the roads are still damp out there. We do have a few showers here in town. Uh, not much, just the few little light uh, sprinkles that have made the road slippery enough. But off to the east is where we've had some of the heavier showers and even a couple of thunderstorms. A few of them just crossed over 10, working their way up to the northeast, sort of out of our area. But we've had a couple of decent downpours as those storms move through Wilson County as well as Gonzales County. And still some more rain there in Gonzales County. So you folks are uh, kind of making out pretty well. And then obviously more further off to the east. And again, working its way off to the uh, east of us. Another good cells moving there through Hallettsville, but at least these are moving along fairly quickly. Rain will continue um, most of it off to the east, obviously, throughout the rest of the morning. And then by late morning and noon, all that is going to be coming to an end and working its way out of here. But we will keep a lot of clouds around, which is going to help to keep temperatures down. Only the low 50s later on today. About what it was yesterday. Then we're going to see more sunshine tomorrow. It's going to be a good looking day tomorrow. And as far as temperatures this week, we stay cool today and then go up and up and then the front moves through and it drops off like a rock and then rebounds again. So it's it is like a roller coaster. Basically notice on Friday, this is the high temperature, the afternoon temperature, the low morning temperature, I should say, is going to be in the mid and upper 50s. So that front moves through Temperatures will drop down throughout the day on Friday, and we are looking at a pretty good chance for a couple of freezing readings on Saturday and Sunday, which would be the latest we've hit freezing since way back, oh gosh, about 15, 16 years ago, back in, I believe it was 2006. It was on the 24th of March when we hit freezing here in town. 49 degrees at noon, clouds and breezy conditions. Most of the rain is going to be working its way off to the east. 52, cloudy, breezy later on today. Then tomorrow, Tomorrow, we're going to be starting off at 40, 45 on Thursday. Humidity really starts to come back in here, so we're going to have some fog to deal with on Thursday morning. Very warm in the afternoon, and then that front moves through early Friday. So we'll start off mid-upper 50s, drop down to the 40s, windy and a few showers around here, and then there's those freezing temperatures Saturday, Sunday. And, of course, got to set your clocks ahead before you go to bed. Saturday morning, spring forward on Sunday. Steph, Mark. Thank you, Mike. Right now, 651, about 44 degrees. And tomorrow on GMSA, a special kind of equine therapy that's making a big difference in the lives of young people close to home. It's a story that's sure to put a smile on your face. And a quick look outside with live cam. We'll wrap up GMSA after this break. Good morning. Coming up here on GMA, the latest from inside Ukraine. As Russia steps up its attacks, so many civilians racing to escape. Ukraine's president delivering a defiant message while asking for more help from other countries. Pentagon Press Secretary John Kirby will join us live this morning. You'll see that and so much more right here on GMA. Good morning, everyone. Well, stalls seem to be the trending issue throughout the morning. We're seeing traffic moving, but in other areas, we're seeing some vehicles come to a standstill, and that's because of those stalls. Let's go ahead and take you right to the map. I-10 at the Y or westbound at 35. You can see that buildup of traffic in those lanes because a stall has been reported. Been there for almost an hour now, so watch out carefully. But thankfully, during this morning rush, we don't have very many issues to report, Mike. We've got a couple of damp spots on the road, some uh, showers, even a few thunderstorms well off to the east. Those are continuing to work their way off to the east. A good breeze out there right now, so we do have wind chill temperatures, 30s and 40s. Bundle up today, and uh, boy, it's not going to warm up all that much. 52 degrees, but then a big warm up midweek and a big cool down. Thank you, Mike. Welcome back again. Yeah, welcome, welcome back. back. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you back here at 9.